My name is Ali B, and I happen to be a university student at ANU, and I am studying Forensic Anthropology and Bioanthropology. Now, these two things have many, many components to them, and some of these things are Forensics, Biology, Archaeology, Anthropology, and sometimes things like Chemistry, Health slash Medicine, Criminology, and just a dash of Psychology. So, with that being said, I thought it would be fun if we decided to do ta -da! Now, this is a chemistry kit I just happened to pick up while I was in the store the other day and I thought, wow, I never had anything like this when I was a kid. What I played with was basically just Play-Doh and dirt. So, I thought it would be fun to do one of these kits, see how easy it is if it truly is for kids. I'm guessing it's more for teenagers than anyone else and to see if I myself actually end up learning anything from this more than what I learn while I'm in class. So, let's open this baby up, shall we? Oh, okay. So, you've got components in here, and then you've got two little cups, and you get a booklet. Okay, so, this is the booklet. So looking through the booklet, okay, so I thought they were just did maybe like three or four experiments, but this has a lot of experiments in them, okay. Well, I'm not going to be able to get through all of these experiments, but hopefully I'll be able to get through most of them. All right. So shall we open up the kit and see what we get? Okay, first off we get gloves. Going by the size of them, I think these gloves are for kids, they are not going to fit my hands, that's for sure. One, two, three, four test tubes, a balloon, one starch, two pets, a spoon, a little container, a magic flower kit, one, two, three sachets of bicarb soda. I'm guessing from the looks of it, it says do not eat, because there are some bicarb sodas that you can eat and put in food, and others that you really shouldn't. And then we have citric acid, we have some phosphate, stirring stick, and we have some blotting paper. It looks like a pretty comprehensive kit here, and I for one cannot wait to get started. Alright, let's get into it. Now we're going to be growing soap crystals. Now, this is a thing I did actually used to do a lot back in high school. Usually when I was in year 7, maybe year 8, because that's when we actually learnt this. But I'm going to do it again anyway because I really love it. You will need a quarter of a cup of salt, one cup of water, cotton string, scissors, a jam jar, a pencil that can fit the span of the jam jar, saucepan and a stove top, and as optional, food coloring. I am going to be using food coloring however because I love the color yellow and you can never have too many yellow crystals around the house. Okay, so first, it says to cut the string into four pieces about eight centimeters in length. So then it says tie these pieces at their middles and make a pom-pom. Now, I don't know about a lot of people, but making pom-poms as a kid for me was really hard. I mean, not these types of pom-poms, the one where you get that little circular disc thing with the hole in it and then you have to wrap the wool around it. Yeah, I never quite got the hang of it even though it was so easy to do apparently. But well, maybe in another video I might do it. Seriously, I was near to and I got so angry that I was the only one who didn't have a pom pom. And everyone else did. Oh, I was so mad. Now let's tie a longer piece of string to the pencil. So we have our pencil, snip a longer piece of string, tie it to the pencil. Longer piece of string. We well, can't see it because of the colour. Longer piece of string. So it doesn't look to do on the book, but I'm just going to tie this to get the but like that. Yeah, that'll work. So now that we have that done, the next thing that we do, I'm just going to go and boil the water and I will be right back. Okay, so I decided to do it a little bit differently to what it says in the book. So I have my cup of boiled water here and I have my one quarter cup of salt. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slowly pour this in while I stir at the same time. In goes the salt, only a little bit at a time, and then you just stir it in. And we're done. 
Okay, now you just keep stirring and stirring and stirring until all the salt has dissolved. So, all the salt has dissolved. Now, what is it safe for us to do next? Add a few drops of food coloring for a colored crystal if you want. So I'm going to do that. Get yellow. All right, let's add a few. So I'm guessing three drops, maybe? Let's mix it up and see how that looks. All right, that really does just look like a jar of pea. I swear though, it's going to look better once it's all gone. Now it says to dangle the string pom-pom into the solution so that it is covered completely. Dangle this into here. Ensure the experiment is put somewhere safe where it cannot be disturbed. Wait a couple of days and watch the salt crystals start to appear as the water evaporates. Okay, so I am going to put this up here and we are going to come back in, say, an hour or two and I'll show you the results there. Crystal flowers. Okay, so I've never done this one before. Apparently it's different to the one that we just did, but we'll see how it goes. So, follow the instructions on the label of the magic flower. Magic flower? I mean, this thing? Okay, what have we got in here? We have a little cap. We have crystal liquid. We have a little tree. Oh, that's kind of cute. And we have instructions. Okay, instructions. Insert one piece of paper into the trunk and then the other and put them onto the container. So I'm guessing these are what they're talking about. So I'm just going to pop it all out. And you just slide the two together. I don't remember creating nativity sets like this. Okay, then what do I do? Put them into the container. I'm guessing this is the container since it didn't come with anything else. Doesn't quite fit. Oh, there we go. So on here it says you can give the crystal some color by spotting cardboard flower with some food coloring. Okay, so I am going to add and some red. We have a little bit of red on this side. And then we'll have a little bit of blue on the other side. So we're going to do these sides in colors and then these two sides could be our controls. So what does it say to do next? Squeeze the liquid metal liquid medicine. This doesn't look like medicine to me. Okay, caution, do not eat or swallow. So we're going to cut a very fine little corner because I don't want it going everywhere. And then we're just going to pour it onto the edges. Okay, and we're just going to put some on the top. And we're done! That is to leave it for a few hours. I'm going to go and put this up and we will come back to it in, say, a few hours. Okay, cool. Guys, look! It's growing little crystals! How cool is that? Of course, that was kind of a failure. Um, I think what went wrong was that I wasn't boiling it and putting it in at the same time, but lesson learned, I guess. <laughs> but look how cool that is, like seriously, and the different colors, and oh, a little bit fell off there. Okay guys, so it's been a few hours, so let's have a look at the crystal flower that we made. Oh my gosh, how cool is that? Going by the crystals that have fallen down there, it seems pretty delicate, so I'd probably just leave this in a place that it won't be disturbed, just so you can keep looking at it. More eccentricity, I swear, this book is all about the puns. So, for this one, you need two fresh eggs, a glass of water, a glass of vinegar, and a plastic bowl. So, basically, all you need to do with this one is you put one egg in the water and one of them in the vinegar. Leave them for a couple of hours, so we're going to come back to them soon. Okay, so it's been a few hours, and as you can see, there is something happening to our vinegar. However, nothing happened to our water. 
So I'm gonna take the vinegar I got and have a look at it. While the egg isn't as translucent as the direction says it should be, it is actually quite squishy. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna drop it in and see if it cracks. And no crackage, and it's quite bouncy itself. It's actually pretty fun. Now, going to the regular egg. So, if we drop this in here, what happens? The egg has just cracked. One more time. And there she blows. <laughs> so I'm gonna say this was pretty successful and pretty cool. It's a good pile of trick if you ever have enough time to actually make a whole one of these. Sizzling sherbet. Sherbet is something that I've had ever since I was a kid and I've absolutely loved it. So I think this one's going to be fun for everyone. You will need citric acid, bicarb soda, icing sugar, a mixing bowl, measuring spoons, something to mix with, and a dry jar with a lid to keep the finished product in. First, add 6 teaspoons of citric acid and 4 teaspoons of bicarb soda. So that's all done. Now, add 4 tablespoons of icing sugar and mix well. You know, I actually made this once before when I was in year 5, I think it was. Yeah, year 5. And it was at a science fair that I was participating in with my teacher. So it was at home in one of the parks that was actually very close to where I lived at the time. And it was kind of funny because that's the day that we found out that I'm allergic to sunscreen. Another thing I would try to do while mixing it is get all the little lumps out because that way it'll mix together even better. Okay, so I have my mixture. Now it says to pour it in the jar. I personally would use a piece of paper to help try to funnel it into the jar itself. There you have it. Although right now it kind of just looks like white powder, but um, yeah. Taste testing time. Let's see if it really does make our mouths explode with flavor. Mm. Okay, well that's definitely fizzy. <coughs> uh, so, yep, I'm pretty sure that one worked. Whew. Ah, and it's very, very sour. Alright, on to the next one. Super Silver Sparkle Restorer. So this one is to restore tarnished silver objects. You will need tarnished silver objects. In this case, we'll be using some of my earrings. A plastic container deep enough to submerge the objects in. In this case, a bowl. Enough aluminium foil to cover the bottom of the container. Bicarb soda. A kettle for boiling the water. Measuring spoons and cup. And an old soft cloth for drying. So first, measure up enough aluminium foil to cover Cover the bottom of your container. Then place your tarnished silver objects into the container. Now I'm going to make sure that all the earrings are open so that everything can get clean. So now we have to fill the kettle with water and boil it. So I'm going to go do that and I'll be right back. So I have my freshly boiled water here. It is very, very hot. Now we measure two tablespoons of bicarb soda into the jug. Next, you pour the boiling water from here into the jug. Quickly you have to pull the water from here into here to make sure that it completely covers the objects within. Now if the solution that you made does not cover your objects, pour it out and make an entirely new batch. You can't reuse the same batch. Now it says if the object is lightly tarnished it should only take a few minutes. Whoa, look at that. The objects are already starting to become silver again. Okay, so it's been a few minutes, so I'm going to use these tongs to take out the earrings from the solution and put them onto the cloth. And now that we've done that, we use the cloth to wipe the tarnished objects to clean them. Well, they seem to be a lot more silver than they were before. Well, these look pretty good to me, so I'm going to say this was successful. Well, that's all I have for you guys today. This kit was pretty amazing. Now, I didn't get through every single one of the experiments, but I did a lot of them. And it's actually done extremely well. So thank you so much for watching, you guys, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!